Concrete shader will be a good warm-up material in our case since it's only located on one element and it's a floor slab in our case. So let's go to the viewport, select it and by pressing Shift H hide everything except of our object. I will now disable the viewport boundaries by pressing Ctrl Alt B and by pressing Z I will switch to the look dev view. So you can see we have this very basic reflection. Let's now click new here and name our shader accordingly. And I will very quickly drag and drop texture, which we are going to use. And this is the Chocofour Concrete Solid 08, which is part of the Chocofour Interior Scene 10, which you already have available if you purchase the course. So as I plug it in, you can see we have this bluish color and nothing else visible on our concrete slab. The reason we don't see anything, that's because we don't have UV mapping created yet. So let's go to the edit mode and for our concrete slab, it's gonna be pretty easy process. So I'm just gonna select these edge loops here. I'm pressing Alt key and left clicking and then Shift key to add a new selection. Let's now add these four edges here as well. Now I'm going to press Ctrl E, mark seam. So now with those seams uh, created, these are the areas which Blender will cut and create a UV plane here. If I go to the face mode and left uh, and press L key with my cursor pointed on the area, you can see it actually uh, finishes the selection on the uh, UV seams. So I can now hide this element, create four new seams here and create two seams here. So now when I go to the face mode, press L, you can see this is another UV uh, island. And to unwrap this element, I only, need, I only need to select those four corner edges here. So imagine you're just using scissors and cutting these corners with the scissors. When you do that, I'm selecting this part only right now, pressing U, unwrap and you can see we have those corners cut and spread around the layout very nicely. So let's now unhide everything. Let's go to the face mode, select everything and unwrap again. So this is our UV layout for the concrete floor slab. Let's now switch to the look dev view again and you can now see we have a pattern of the texture visible. Let's maybe increase it twice. So I go to the edit mode, select everything here within the UV layout, press S to, to scale it twice. And now we have just a little bit more detail. The reason the diffuse texture is blue is because I'm using the RGB channels of that texture as an inputs to the specular roughness and normal inputs here. I'm covering that topic in detail in a separate tutorial, which is linked in the course. But for now, let's just focus on how to set up this material only. Um, let's create color, hue saturation node and plug it in here. If I decrease the saturation, you can see the texture looks uh, more bearable, um, but the, there is still too little contrast within it. So we can improve that either by creating color gamma node, plugging it somewhere here and increasing the gamma value. But that's a quick, I would say quick and dirty solution. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, as I think in our case, we need to look for something different. So let's delete it, press shift A and go to the converter color ramp node. And this is the node which you should get very used to because we are going to use it quite often. So I'm plugging in all the inputs and by default, 
nothing changes to be honest but if we move those handles around like that you can see we are now controlling the end colors of that texture so the white values become or the bright values become 100% white within this spectrum and the black or dark values become 100% dark within this spectrum or we can define the color the actual color here so we, we can even change it to something different if we have an rgb input because in our case the texture is desaturated yeah but let's just focus on uh, making the diffuse right now so um i would say let's just go 100 percent dark we can also change the interpolation uh, algorithm here so maybe a b-spline which gives us more soft results will be enough let's create something like this for now and we will fine-tune it later as soon as the diffuse color is set up let's unplug it here and let's create additional node which is converter separate RGB and what that actual node does what it does is if you go to Photoshop and preview the texture you can see on RGB look of that texture is this bluish color I mentioned but if we just separate and see the red color channel it's something like this if we go to the green color channel it's well it simply has less contrast but if we go to the blue co color channel you can see we have those little cracks separated and what the separate rgb node allows us doing in blender is simply using those channels we can see here in photoshop as inputs to our principled bsdf shader so for example for the roughness the lower we go with it let's see it here the closer we are to the zero values here the more reflections we are getting so what it means the darker the texture we have here so let's say this is the red channel again in photoshop the dark values will generate very sharp reflections the bright values will generate um well diffused uh, scattered rough reflections so let's just see how it goes if I plug it in here you can see this is the well default unchanged look of the red color channel if I switch it to green you can see it looks a little bit different I think we need to go lower with the color just like that if you switch to blue well now it looks completely different so almost zero reflections here let's stick to the red color and again let's create converter color ramp node plug it in here and try to fine-tune these reflections in the reference our concrete shader looks very very reflective meaning it has low roughness so this value has to go closer to dark color if we increase it here you can see we are getting this very mirrory look if we increase the white value it becomes very well the contrast increases but it looks very very unnatural it looks like someone poured water on the surface to be honest so let's try to work with those handles again I will just change the interpolation to b-spline because it gives us more soft and controllable inputs so the the more I move this handle to the right the more reflections the more sharp reflections we are getting I think this is too sharp to be honest so even if it doesn't look like exactly like in the reference let's try to get a look that we are simply happy with if we change this color from the perfect zero to just a little bit above it as it always works in the physical world you can see if i go very much upwards 
then we are getting very very diffuse reflections so let's keep it around 0 0.05 and the white values just a little bit below one so eight something and yeah i would say i would say keeping it like this maybe will be enough for now so if we combine it with the diffuse color setup pre before you can see this is the actual look of our shader at this point maybe we need to darken it a little bit so i can go with this uh, hue saturation value note and use the value slider just to increase the the brightness of the of the shader let's just keep it 0 0.5 and yeah now we need to set up the normal the bump the actual well structure of that material so you can see i've disconnected the node setups i created previously and that's because i want to keep the effect i'm working on separated from everything else because otherwise i'm not fully sure what's happening in the screen so let's go to the vector nodes here and choose the bump node i'm going to use the blue channel as a height input and let's just plug it in and see how it looks by default well we get something very very natural like this but let's keep the strength as one and reduce the distance of the bump effect so you go the lower i go the, the yeah the lower i go with it the more it looks like something um let's create another converter and color ramp node plug it in here and see what happens if we edit the node handles so if i increase the black handle you can see the material looks like that but if i go with the white one we are limiting the bump effect only to those very uh let's say deep points of the bump so let's keep it like this let's maybe leave a little bit of roughness within the surface and that's why i'm using the b spline again here yeah and i would say that looks pretty pretty good let's keep it like this and combine it with the other notes right now so this is the look the general look of our concrete shader i will now switch back to the camera view and by going to the solid look in the viewport switch all of the elements back let's create a render region around this area maybe and switch to the rendered view to see how the shader looks within the environment if we compare it to the reference you can see i think it's a little bit too dark in my opinion so let's select and thanks to this node setup we can very quickly fix that so let's increase the value of that node to one i think it's pretty much okay to be honest um but i also think we might increase the roughness or decrease the roughness of the reflections so they are even sharper than what we have here but i don't think it necessarily looks great in the rendering so let's just keep it as it is for now later when we add a, another shaders the, the rest of the shaders we will fine tune each one of them um, for the final look what i'm still interested in is the bump look so i think we need to invert it as you can see here those little cracks within the shader should be should face downwards instead of upwards so let's go to the bump node and select this check checker here so you can see now we have a correct bump and i would say we could also increase the texture scale by two once more just so we have those little um those details yeah not that visible i think 
You can also pan around the viewport, look for a different camera perspectives, look from the, uh, from the upper perspective at the shader because then the reflections look a little bit different. The color is more visible than when we look from an angle like that. What I also like applying in each one of our sh of my shaders is increasing the specular at least to 0 0.75, even up to one, to be honest, for some materials. But let's keep it as at 0 0.75 for now. And yeah, I would say at this point, that's everything we can do because uh, fine-tuning the material at this point doesn't make much sense. We really need to see how it looks in context of all the other materials, all the other shaders. So yeah, it's quite similar to modeling. We simply take one step at a time. We create a base and then we fine-tune it later once we move forward with the other materials, the other elements of the scene. So thank you for watching this part and let's now move to the wooden shader. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.